Welcome to a podcast about wealth and life with the advisors from Foster and Motley. In this podcast, they share their mission to help individuals, couples, and families achieve the life they envision by providing a comprehensive wealth management experience. Join this seasoned team of experts as they explore actionable steps to improve your financial well being and answer your most pressing questions. We all know how important it is to get off on the right foot. So what does that mean when it comes to working with a wealth management firm? Yeah, it can be a tricky road to navigate as you consider your current advisor may be sharing some financial flubs from your past and being open about your goals and where you want to go in the future. I'm Patrice Sikora, and I'm joined by Foster & Motley financial planner Dave Neenaber and investment manager Zach Horn to discuss the development of a successful relationship with a financial team you trust. Dave, talk about that first sit down with an advisor because I'm sure there can be awkward moments during it. Yeah, it's uh, one of those things when you talk about money, uh, plenty of awkward moments can follow, whether that's a conversation with your spouse or family or an advisor. Um, and when we think about successful wealth management engagement, I think there's some like, technical things that tend to be top of mind that I'm going to minimize taxes and I'm going to have a good estate plan and I'm going to get the right mix of investments for my situation. But um, as Zach and I were talking about a successful financial plan, we found out that so many of the elements of a successful plan are much more human in nature and not those deep technical ones. So um, having the opportunity to kick it off first, I guess I get the low hanging fruit on what makes for a, a successful engagement. We'll see if Zach agrees. Um, but I think probably the, the biggest, most uh, common thread we see with new clients is just facing past decisions. And maybe there's some things you're not especially proud of. And maybe there's one spouse that caused one of those decisions and you've just, you've got to face that. And so, uh, you know, our clients and prospects we, need, we meet with need a, a comfortable place to fess up to that, move beyond it and know the advisor they're talking to has seen just about everything. And even the pros have some of those issues. So uh, I don't know, Zach, what do you think? Did I get the low hanging fruit? Or is there something else that's top of mind? Yes, that's always part of the initial conversations, a little bit of uh, potentially guilt or shame of, of actions that were taken that didn't pan out so well. So sometimes people come in thinking, I thought I knew what I was doing and, and maybe I didn't. Other times people come in and, and readily admit that they didn't know what to do, so they did nothing, which in and of itself is, is not a good decision. So, you know, certainly most of our clients are not spending their waking hours learning about investments and financial planning and all the ins and outs of what that entails. That's why they're looking for an advisor. And, you know, that's why we have a job and, and the expertise that we can provide it goes pretty deep and it goes deeper than just, you know, picking up the wall street journal from time to time and picking a stock or two. How do you, how do you put them at ease when they say, okay, I really, I didn't know what I was doing and I did the wrong thing and I admit it. What do you say? I think we just admit that we're all human mistakes happen. And, um, the, you know, the best time to fix that mistake or move forward is, is now. And you know, taking that first step to acknowledge that you could use the advice of a tr trusted financial planner and investment manager is, is a step in the right direction. And, you know, we are not going to hold it over our clients heads. If there was a mistake or inaction, we're going to get down to what the plan needs to look like going forward and how we can maximize their wealth and their financial well being, uh, you know, on a proactive basis, looking towards the future. Are people willing to be vulnerable? It's tough. I mean, what, uh, being vulnerable in, in front of someone who maybe you've just met recently and having that spousal communication to admit to those things, it's tough. And it doesn't happen on the first conversation all the time. Uh, but I think as time goes by, as you build that trust factor, uh, knowing more about our clients and their circumstances allow us to give that better advice. Yeah. And I'll add that it's surprisingly, People come in and, and, and probably don't appreciate 
well, surprisingly to me, I guess, since I've been doing this for a while now, but that they don't appreciate how much information we truly want to know. I mean, we want to know everything that impacts their financial life so that we can provide the greatest value add service that we can for financial planning and investment needs. So, you know, that entire picture needs to be painted for us. And again, as David said, take some time to build rapport and build the comfort level. And we work with our clients kind of on their own time frame to some extent. We want to make sure that we're pushing them forward to get you know plans in place to do our job and to better their financial circumstances, but understanding that it's a relationship and it takes time to build that trust. Yeah. So as we talk about uh, facing past decisions, being vulnerable. I mean, none of those things sound like something anyone would want to sign up for on day one. Uh, interestingly, I actually went through the planning process with my wife and it, it kind of helped both of us understand what that value add is. It's, it wasn't really the technical side of it. Um, it was having that opportunity to uh, agree to our common goals and to verbally say them. Uh, we thought we knew what each other were thinking, but there were some differences that came out. Um, and having an advisor that can facilitate that conversation and uh, frankly, listen as much as they talk. Um, I found the advisor wanted to spew a lot of technical stuff and that was great, but the benefit of sitting down with my wife and agreeing to our common goals uh, there was just huge power in that and I think helped make for a, a successful planning engagement. I can see that actually this might strengthen uh, a marriage too, if you've got everything on the table and say, well, I didn't understand that. I didn't realize that that's how you feel. Okay. And this is how I feel. You guys don't have degrees in marriage counseling, do you? Uh, some days I wish I would go <laughs> back for that. I have a lot to learn yet, but, uh, you know, Zach and I see it with clients. You typically have one that's a little bit stronger in all things financial and one that's stronger in something else and doesn't care to be involved in the finances as much. So it's on Zach and me and the entire Foster and Motley team to speak at a level that engages both of those people uh, so that both are involved. Yeah. And that's a great point, David, that we want to work with clients and speak on their level, make it as as simplistic as can be, sometimes there's a lot of complex circumstances to a couple's wealth or a family's wealth, but we want to synthesize it down to the specific goals, the steps that are going to be taken to meet those goals, and you know, make sure that we're talking on, on the right level. And of course, you know, as we're talking about couples, it is extremely important to have both be involved throughout this process. You know, some some people will actually seek out an advisor maybe as a backup plan for their surviving spouse that they think, you know, doesn't know a whole lot about the finances and, and won't be able to, to handle once the, the person who's mainly in charge of dealing with finances is gone. And they, they think of that as kind of, you know, backup plan helpful for their spouse, but that's really not the way it should be. You want to make sure that both both parties, both uh, people in the relationship are well aware of all the ins and outs of their financial circumstances, and then utilize an advisor to help have those tough conversations and get things in order that, you know, that meet the, the needs and the desires of both. And, you know, wealth management is a customized journey, and we need clients that are motivated to get the help. It's going to take some work and David being a financial planner can speak to kind of the deep um, dive, the conversation, the data gathering that happens up front and what kind of an ask that actually is. Yeah, it's um, it requires a level of commitment. There's just no way around it. Uh, it's something you have to want to do, uh, something that you are willing to dedicate the time to do. Um, I had a client in this past week that said, okay, it's time for my uh, semi-annual root canal. And I thought, oh boy, we're not getting off to a good start in this discussion. And uh, <laughs> somehow she was still engaged to do it. Money's just not her thing. She'd rather do anything in the world than talk about money. And she left the meeting. Glad we did it. So there's, <laughs> you've got to have that desire at some level for her. She admitted the desire wasn't great, but she showed up and we worked through a couple of things and just made her situation better. And showing up is half the battle, isn't it? Absolutely. You're dealing with couples here. We've been talking about mostly that. When is the best time to start bringing in other members of the family? I always say the sooner the better. Um, 
there's at all ages, there can be financial decisions and uh, thinking through estate plans. And I know we've had episodes in the past about a family meeting and the benefit of that. And I would encourage the listeners to, to go back to that episode. But um, there's so many things about money that um, you know, we have some sense of that may be a bit disconnected from reality and just having the opportunity to sit down as a family and just kind of start from scratch. There's huge power in that. Uh, and Zach and I have seen that working with clients together and getting the family around the table and everyone has some different experiences and it's mixed in with some misinformation, which you would expect in the world where so much data is available. Um, it, we just help bring simplicity, bring clarity, and really help a family focus on what's most important and try to take out that noise. And our family communications are different depending, of course, on the dynamic of the family, the age of the children. But unfortunately, none of us are taught you know, financial planning 101. Uh, that's more and more becoming a part of maybe some college curriculum. But uh, there's just not much about personal financial planning that gets taught, especially at a young age. So anything we can do for, you know, younger children, maybe approaching the high school age or, or of high school age, is just teaching them the basics, uh, teaching them about the value of the dollar and saving and, and the power of compound interest and what's a stock, what's a bond. Some of that stuff is, is truly helpful. And to hear it from an advisor, you know, somebody other than just mom and dad can often carry more weight. And then we transition that discussion into college years to, to, to start talking about career goals and, and income that'll be earned and, and making sure that, that those uh, children of our clients get off on the right foot, that they're going to save appropriately and live within their means and all of those good things. And so as they do, wrap up their college years and start off in a career, you know, we can help start to advise them on the basics of open a Roth IRA and make sure to, to max fund that every year and take advantage of the max of the match that your employer gives you so that you get that free money in your retirement account. And so, you know, those, the, the small advice there goes a long way and it really is a joy to work with the children of our clients and, and see them get excited and interested in financial planning and investments. And it's amazing how simple the advice can be. When you take out all the noise out of the equation, set up automatic contributions to your 401k, um, keep the investments simple, broadly diversified. It's, I find it refreshing how simple it can be. And I, I enjoy seeing that energy from a client's child as they start to save and you know feel empowered that they've sorted through the noise and they're doing exactly what's best for their circumstances. That's great to hear that they actually come in and listen. Wonderful. Now, it's not a, it's, people don't come in, sit down, and within one session, everything is set up for them. What do they have to be aware of to bring? What data do they need? What documents do they need? Well, to Zach's earlier point, just about everything they could imagine, we're going to need at some point. Um, there's some fundamental pieces, um, a recent tax return, a pay stub, um, those kind of basic things, birth dates, social security numbers, we're just going to need up front. Um, and then we sit down and listen to what's top of mind and try to take a, a triage approach to, okay, we're not going to get insurance and estate planning and retirement and 529 savings down, and we're not going to get that completed in one day. So what's top of mind? Let's get a win under our belt, and then let's progress on to the next step. Uh, so that gradually over time, we're addressing their concerns and making their plan efficient. Yes. And through the wonders of technology, we have streamlined the data gathering process, the onboarding process, so that it's less painful than maybe it once was. So we have technology to securely share data and, and collect documents. And uh, certainly we can take paper too, if that's you know, something that, that people are still more comfortable with. But you know, we have processes in place for onboarding that are going to make it as easy as possible for our clients. There's also a little note here in our, our rundown that um, you'll help your clients understand the documents they can shred. I wish my father had been one of your clients. 
because after he passed, my mother spent nine months shredding documents, checkbooks, check. Re it was ridiculous. Yeah, we get we get a lot of credit for a little service uh, of allowing our clients to drop off shredding because we have large bins here that get securely shredded. They love that. And that's about the easiest thing we could do. But yes, people tend to hoard these documents because they don't know what they can get rid of when, when it would ever be needed. And so we do give kind of the full rundown of here's what you should keep and for how long, and then feel free to, to bring it to us so we can dispose of it properly. And you made a comment earlier, Zach, that not making a decision is a decision in itself. And it's probably not a good one. Talk a little bit about that. Oftentimes we have clients that come in that would just put it off. They didn't, they didn't understand what they should be doing very well, but come to the realization that they should have been doing something. And they just finally make that decision that they need help. And oftentimes it, you know, it's coming up on retirement and and they're thinking, man, I've done very little planning for this retirement. Do I have enough money to last for the rest of our lives? Uh, am, you know, am I able to, to retire and, and be financially secure? And so because of indecisions, they've got um, that pit in their stomach that doesn't feel so good uh, about just not knowing what the future will look like. And so you know, they come to us and, and admittedly say that they put this decision off too long and, and it's time to figure out you know, what needs to happen or what can happen based on where they are currently with their financial circumstances. And again, just like a client coming to us and saying that they've made some bad decisions, we're not gonna hold it over their head or, or tell them that you know, it's too late. It's never too late. It's, there's always the opportunity to improve your future outcomes. And so we just get to work doing what we can within the bounds of where, where the current situation lies and what the goals are and give our clients the ability to make eyes wide open decisions that maybe retirement needs to be put off for a couple of years so that more money can be saved or that some other sacrifice needs to be made if they do want to retire sooner than later. So sometimes those are tough conversations, but ultimately it's about making sure that our clients are going to make the best decisions for the long run with all the relevant information needed to make those decisions. Yeah. And sometimes it's frankly just acknowledging that there is no perfect decision, but let's not let perfect get in front of good enough. Um, because if you're not around to be making those decisions, what would someone else do? And chances are that's a far inferior solution than you would choose. So, you know, if you have a, a couple has a child that has an addiction problem and see kind of how they're going to support that child in different ways, you know, we have to admit there is no perfect solution to that, but let's talk through the different points of views and different structures that we can set up to, to deal with that and try to get to something good enough. Uh, because if you're not around to make those decisions, then someone else uh, could be making them for you. The people who you see when they come in originally, do you find that many of them spend beyond their means or are they pretty frugal? I think there's something in the water here in Cincinnati and the Midwest in general, but <laughs> we spend more time telling our clients to spend more money than to uh, stop spending too much. So, you know, it, I think by the nature of the folks we work with, they tend to be uh, good savers and uh, tend to spend below their means throughout their lifetime. And here we are saying, hey, it's great that you flew coach all those years, but you, you're in a good spot. <laughs> first class and buying that first first class ticket can be a challenge, but uh, it's fun to watch clients get the confidence because, you know, uh, while running out of money is something we all think about a financial plan being designed to prevent, um, not leaving a huge uh, estate may be a goal for someone too. So we've got to carefully balance living in the moment versus saving for tomorrow. And we're able to quantify how much money is needed to achieve kind of steady state throughout the rest of our clients' lives. And if there is room for additional goals that they just didn't think they'd be able to accomplish, maybe that becomes more charitable endeavors, endowing a scholarship to, to your university or sharing the money with the family while you're alive to get more joy out of it. That could be, you know, helping a, an adult child put a down payment on a home or funding your grandkids 529 plans. So it's more difficult to make those decisions with money that you have when you don't have the full plan in place and 
can't be sure, can't have that peace of mind that you've got enough money to do so and still successfully live a long and, and healthy life through retirement. So again, just putting all the information in front of our clients so that they can make those eyes, eyes, wide, eyes wide open decisions. And, you know, to, to David's point, it's, it's something that um, oftentimes is us encouraging a, a little more spending, a little more financial freedom uh, than, than otherwise was, was understood that could be achieved. And so often the reaction is, that's great to know. I'll just keep my distribution as is. <laughs> so to Zach's point there, I think the peace of mind component is so key that, hey, I could be spending more. I choose not to. I'm in a great spot. And there's value in knowing that. And do they value knowing how their money is being invested? Do they want to know? Yes. Yes. Most of the time they want to know first off, they want to build that trusting relationship with, with us, both with the financial planner and an investment manager so that they don't have to be, um, you know, worried about it on an ongoing basis, are things being handled accordingly. But once you kind of get over that initial hump and, and prove uh, the process and show what exactly the investments are doing, how they're being invested and explain it in a, in a very clear way, you know, a lot of times clients just watch along to, to see where their wealth is going, what the markets are doing. There's always an interest in that. We tend to get more phone calls when markets are down versus when markets are up because people get a little nervous, but it, it really is about ongoing investment education and setting some appropriate expectations. And then, you know, making sure that we're taking a customized approach with our clients so that their portfolio fits their needs, their specific needs. And then, you know, again, just making sure to explain what the asset allocation looks like, what investments are being made, what's happening in the markets in a simplistic way that you know, gets the point across and, and makes the clients comfortable. And so, you know, from, from my perspective as an investment manager, it really is about me being a specialist in the investments that are being selected for the client's portfolio, but then helping them to realize that those gains long-term tie back into their financial plan and you know, allow their financial planner to show them you know, fair outcomes for the future and the likelihood of, of their financial success. And so you know, that's, that's wealth management, tying in investments to financial planning so it all fits together in a comprehensive and customized way for our clients. And what I think is interesting is uh, each meeting I have this week, the investment discussion will go to a different level. So we want to meet the client where they are. Uh, for those clients that are pros in the industry, we'll go as deep as they want. Um, to my client that said, sometimes I feel like this meeting feels like a root canal. We said, well, where do you want us to stop at? And after about a minute and a half, she said, you could stop. And that's fine. We wanted to give her what she wanted to know. It was, you know, um, she's hiring us to take care of the details that she can do the other things that she enjoys. So um, it's a different level for each client. And we're happy to meet them where they're at. And I think up front in the relationship, you tend to go a little bit deeper as the clients are learning about the style. But over time, um, you know, they, they see the results and see that it's working. You build that trust. Yeah, and let it be noted that that was not my client as well. So I, it was not a root canal because of my investment <laughs> spiel. So, but, but David's right. We talk to our clients early and often about investments and, and kind of, you know, rein it in once we start to see their eyes glaze over a bit. Do you get new clients from other financial advisors? Yeah, we do. Uh, you know, we're the, we are a fit for a very small group of folks. Um, so Oftentimes, other advisors find that they're not the right fit and will share our name. And we certainly do that a lot with folks that call in. Zach and I take a lot of the inbound calls here for folks looking for an advisor. And we just have a, a candid conversation that our model is one of many. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to get financial advice. And um, we just try to bring that same candor that we give to our clients to the folks that are calling in and talking to us for the first time. Yeah, we see clients that come in that had not acted, right? We talked about that earlier. So they had not worked with an advisor. They just kind of did what they thought was good, saved some money and, and hope it all worked out for the best until they realized they needed a better plan, needed some advice. But we do see those that had acted sooner 
maybe made the wrong decision or maybe just kind of grew out of the, the relationship that they were in pri prior and needed something different. Uh, our approach is more holistic where we're working with individuals and families for both investment management and also, you know, very detailed financial planning. And you know, sometimes what someone may have thought was going to be a wealth management relationship could end up being just more of a money manager, more investment related only. And over time, they realize they, they just need more. They need more of that planning. They need more of a high touch service. And, you know, that's kind of our bread and butter and where we think we provide the best service to our clients, combining investment management and that expertise with full service financial planning and a very high touch client service offering. So we want our clients to come to us with anything and everything that impacts their financial lives. And if we can't you know, find a solution for them in house, we're going to have a relationship that we can you know, point them in that direction to, to meet those needs. All right. That's very human, very touch, touchy feely. What about technology? You mentioned technology for going through data and saving data. What about robots, guys? Are you afraid of them? They certainly improve technology, improves our client experience. Um, it allows us to manage client portfolios with the, the best technology out there, have our interactions be secure with clients. Um, am I afraid of robots? Not really, uh, especially given what we talked about today. Um, you know, space to be vulnerable and to let the past go and, you know, face some difficult spousal communication. Um, I'd love to see a robot that can do that. And maybe we'll get to that point. But uh, I think so much of the, a successful wealth management agreement is just having that space uh, with a compassionate advisor that's kind of seen it all and is going to help you make tomorrow better than today. And I'll just add that when you know, the robo advisor, you know, first kind of came on the scene years ago, there were plenty of predictions that, you know, there goes, there goes the industry. We're all going to be out of a job because a robot can handle it. And as David said, it, it certainly enhances the investment process, but more, more than just that, the, the data gathering and, and basically our abilities in general, we, it allows us to be better at what we do. And it allows us to focus more on the human element on, on that high touch, you know, full service approach and leverage our time even better. And we've seen that over the last several years that robo advisors uh, have not taken over and, and replaced humans. They've just enhanced the process, made, made it a really a better mousetrap for our clients to, to receive our services, to have investment management, and to get a more full service approach. And so that's exactly what we're trying to accomplish as we work with our clients and bring, you know, bring the, the technologies that are leading the industry to, to our clients for their benefit. And you've also mentioned several times, this is a team effort. You are a team there. Absolutely. So our clients get the benefit of working both with a financial, a financial planner uh, and an investment manager. Uh, we're a little bit unique in that, having both of those advisors in on meetings, but we think it's important for the investment approach to be framed by our clients and their unique circumstances. And obviously with financial planning, uh, you need to be in the room, listening to those conversations, listening to the goals, listening to the fears. And uh, we're certainly better as a team than we are individually. I don't think robots know about teams yet. Yeah, you're safe. You're safe. <laughs> but Dave Nee neighbor, Zach Horn, thank you so much. This was really very interesting, insightful discussion. And you've explained what it takes to get a plan in place. It's work, but once you've got the heavy lifting done, your team can do the rest. Follow Foster and Motley's podcast about life and wealth. Comment, we'd love to hear from you, and share with others. I'm Patrice Sikora, and let's talk again later. Thank you for listening to Foster and Motley, a podcast about wealth and life. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information discussed and posted represents the views and opinions of the guests and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Foster and Motley. The content, 
including mention of specific investments or planning techniques is for informational and for educational purposes only. It is not intended as a recommendation or a substitute for professional financial advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions regarding your financial planning and investments. Foster & Motley is not affiliated with any third-party providers. Any mention of a third-party provider does not imply an endorsement of that provider. If you decide to utilize a third-party provider, you do so at your own risk.